es a maraca, es a maraca, a very, very warm maraca. In today's video, we're going to be playing with hand warmers and putting them in pure oxygen. I get cold really easily, so I carry a bunch of these things around in the car. These are little pouches of like this cloth, and what they're full of is mostly iron powder. Iron powder that hasn't reacted with oxygen, and in the process of doing that, they heat up. The reaction of oxygen and iron is exothermic. With the amount they have in these pouches, it gets noticeably warm. In fact, on the packaging, it says it gets an uh, average temperature of 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm, that's warm. Today, what we want to do is see what happens if we increase the oxygen content around these. Oxygen in the air that we're breathing is somewhere between 18 and 20 percent, and we want to see what happens if we expose these to 100 percent oxygen. Here's the basic idea. We have hand warmers, and we want to check out the reaction of the iron and pure oxygen. See how hot we can get them, and if we can make them exceed the temperature on the packaging. First, I think we should just see how hot one gets. So that's open, I've shaken it around, it should be exposed, and now we can let it sit there. I also think we should make a pile of a bunch of them and see if it like gets hotter as a result. So let's Are we do shaking like, them? Yeah, just a little. Shake it up, place it right there. And then let's, uh, let's leave both of those for 20, 30 minutes and okay. see what temperature we're at. Now we've got our one that we opened, a pile that we opened, and now we're going to open them farther. I'm going to get a single one, take all the powder out and pour it into a pile, and then we're gonna take about six of them and make a bigger pile. So this is what's inside these things. On the back, it lists the ingredients. So it says it has iron, water, vermiculite, charcoal, polymer, and salt. And I think that's like the coolest thing that you said is that there's water in here. Mm -hmm. um, that was like the first thing that you and I noticed when we opened this pack that they yeah. feel damp. The dirt, iron stuff that's inside them, it doesn't quite feel dry. It doesn't feel like it's, you know, wet. But it doesn't like feel damp. like dry dirt. It feels like, you know, it rained a few days ago dirt. All right, so we are going to leave these running more time than just right now, but I wanna really quickly, even though we have our infrared camera going, I also want to get some shots with a thermometer. The first one that we opened has been going for the longest. Let's see, we are showing 91 Fahrenheit on the outside of the pouch here. The pile, we're getting uh, 85. All right, let's see if our pile of dirt has started warming up. So the plate around it is showing 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And in fact, we can take one of these still in the packaging, also 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And we are up to 84. It's climbing. Let's see in our bigger pile if that's making any difference yet. It's about the same. It hasn't been out of the packaging quite as long yet, but we're gonna let it keep going. So what I want to see is how things go differently if we are exposing these to a higher concentration of oxygen. It smells so terrible, it smells like iron. So okay. I'm going to start adding oxygen. Push out everything Flush else. It out. That should be an almost pure oxygen environment in there. So we'll give that a minute and then we'll start taking temperature readings. Now one thing is infrared, this is not going to read through the glass very well. So we can take some temperature readings of the outside of the glass, which will also start to heat up, mm -hmm. but we don't want to open it a lot to take the temperature reading because it'll all escape. Yep. And if we need to do that, that's fine. We can add more oxygen in there and see what that does. All right, there obviously is. this isn't a perfect 100% oxygen seal. Other air is gonna be getting in there as we're like taking this out, but it's a much higher percentage of oxygen. It is. Look at the condensation oh, over wow. here already. Yep. This is. <laughs> there's a whole lot of condensation not happening. Really noticeably warm, but yeah, there's noticeable water buildup on the walls already. Let's do a heat test update. So it's been another few minutes. This one is up to 98 degrees Fahrenheit. 98.6, I just saw that, so human temperature. Our bigger pile, 95. So it's, it's closing the up. gap. Yeah. All right, now our out of the pouch. Ooh, 104, 105. Dang. Almost 106 already. So the pouch slows the reaction a little bit. <laughs> Bigger pile, 99. Oh, down here is, oh, 121. All right, I do want to check on how these ones are doing at this point. Higher oxygen environment, but maybe it used it all up. Hard to say. Ooh, yeah, 121. Oh, wow. 
that's way warmer oh. than this one has gotten to, and this one had a, a head start. This one's only at about 100 degrees. This in the high oxygen environment, yep. 112. So yeah, as high as in the 120s without as much time. I wanna refill the oxygen in these because they may be using up a lot of it. Okay, let's check our pile. The cup itself is up to 86, 87 degrees, so that's gotten warmer. Almost up to 130, still not as much as our pile of powder. Ooh, over 130. And we did this one last. Yes. <laughs> so we're gonna make liquid oxygen. So to make this, we're gonna run oxygen through this copper coil while it's submerged in liquid nitrogen. Okay. It'll cool the oxygen down to the point where it turns into a liquid and we should get it to drip out into our cup. So liquid oxygen itself is not actually flammable. What it does is it makes everything else that is flammable burn much, much better. Everything needs oxygen in order to burn. It's part of the chemical process and liquid oxygen is such a pure form of it that it allows that process to happen much more readily. So we've got liquid oxygen. I'm going to pour some into this metal tray. A lot of it's unfortunately gonna boil away, but that's fine. And I'm going to just pour in a tiny, tiny bit and see what sort of reaction. Have you tried this any. yet? Nope. Great. Hmm. Not doing a whole lot like that. I feel like it's confused on what to do. It's like, should I get hot? Should warm I get cold? warm or cold? Yeah. So, well, so far I can tell you, it's very, very cold. So the liquid oxygen, even though it's providing an oxygen rich environment, the chemical reaction that makes it heat up doesn't seem to be taking place very much. It's not happy. All right, another experiment I do want to set up. Now this is an idea I got from Cody's lab who did something very similar. He took one of these hand warmers and put it inside a soda bottle. He then filled the bottle with pure oxygen and sealed it off. And he showed a few times the progression over time, as it used up the oxygen inside, the bottle just collapsed. So we're going to set up not just the same one that he did, but we're also going to do a couple other versions. We're going to do one that has all the powder outside of a pouch, and we're going to do one that has several pouches in it. Still with the pouches holding the powder, but multiple pouches in one bottle. And we're going to time lapse watching all of those bottles react. So the one with three packets in it did start collapsing first, like it was the first one to have the walls. And yeah, I think it mostly it happened to collapse in that way that it twisted and shrunk yeah. more, but it is cool to see how much it pulled them in. All three of these seem to have done a great job. This one has collapsed the most. Now, it doesn't look like it necessarily collapsed like with less oxygen, like less gas. It might just be the shape that this particular bottle collapsed in, but it is interesting that our one with one hand warmer in it and nothing else actually like shrunk down the most. Because it was one and it wasn't using it so quickly, yeah. it was able maybe to collapse. That, and... Maybe that changed it. And this one had one outside of the packet and then this one had three packets in it, which this one started to collapse before we even got the time lapse going. Yeah. So it definitely was quicker to react. Mm -hmm. Now in the end, I don't think it necessarily reacted more, but... That one is just impressive. It is so smushed down. <laughs> If there's anything you guys want to see us do with hand warmers besides what we've done today, we would be more than happy to explore this because we love to be warm human beings. So let us know in the comments below. <laughs> guys, that's it for today, but we've got tons of great videos for you to see. Click right there to check out one of our favorites and we'll see you the next time. Talk to you then. Are these the Oreo crumbs? That's or uh, iron dirt. I'll try again. Yeah. <laughs>